In this video, I'll show you three water start possibilities. I'll show you the advantage and disadvantage of each one, when to do them, how to do them, and common problems that can come with each one. I'll cover the water start up down, the power stroke start, and the down up start. My name is Tiago Rocha, and I've been teaching kitesurf instructors on how to teach for more than 10 years and teaching beginners since 2003. During these years, I've picked up several different techniques to do the water start. Here are my current findings. If you like these videos, consider subscribing to the channel by clicking the subscribe button here. Like the video and activate the notifications. It would be great to see some feedback about these techniques that I'm describing. Have you tried any of them? If so, what do you feel about them? Let me know how hard or how easy it was for you to water start in the comment section below. So let's start with the most common water start technique. The up-down is the most commonly used technique for water start, but for me, it's the least effective and the hardest one to master. But once you manage to kite correctly, you will still use it a lot of times. Wind speed will change the instructor provided. To set the example, I will give an average wind speed and direction. For the opposite direction, just mirror the procedure. So with average wind speeds around 15 knots and wanting to go to the left. Water start up down. Kite movement. You should put the kite past 12, around one o'clock and send it down through the power zone. When you get pulled, you need to steer the kite back up to 11. The kite will do an S curve in the power zone. On the moment you turn up, is also the moment you stand up. If you, get, if you forget to turn the kite back up, it will go through the power zone to the water in full force. Board. The board should be pointing downwind. So when you get the pull, you go downwind and ease the power. If the board is not pointing downwind, the force may be too much and you might go over the board. Body. When you're starting, you should have your back leg bent and the front leg stretched to get the board pointing downwind. When you feel the pull, you should try to just stand up. The up-down water start is the most common water start technique displayed in many videos. But for me, it's the worst one. The power of the kite is directly straight in front. And when the kite is not steered back, you will send the kite straight down through the power zone. The chances of breaking it increases exponentially. Also, the force is straight parallel to the water. And it doesn't help you to stand. Your starting position is also not stable as you will need to have one leg straight and another one bent, making you stay in an offset position. Standing is another problem as it's the term most instructors use, but it's a wrong one. When you kite, you rarely stand. You are almost always hanging on the kite and edging. And that is not what a non-kiter understands by standing. There are several common problems like rotation before starting, not turning the kite back up and ending up sending it to the ground in full power, flying over the board due to being pulled and standing vertical. Other problem is that it's not a gradual. If you do not make the S in the power zone with enough power, you don't stand. And if you don't ease the power by pointing downwind, you fly. So it takes some attempts to master it. And most of them are very frustrating. Power stroke, water start. Kite movement. Same as all power strokes, the kite should be going between 10 and 11, up and down quickly, making a sinus movement. This way, the kite will generate power to get you to stand up. Board. The board should be parallel to the kite, holding onto the water and pointing upwind. As the power increases, you press with your legs to stand against the kite. Body. Your body should be perpendicular to the lines of the kite basically going from squat position to a more vertical one. Power stroke technique is more comfortable when the wind is stronger, as you don't need to move the kite so much to help you to stand up. You are also in a much more controlled position. Holding the board in the squat position against the kite helps to keep it under control. And then just pushing your legs to stand up against the kite puts you going upwind in a controlled way. Down up, water start. Kite movement. This water start, you should put the kite at two o'clock and send it to 11. Start a little bit lower and send it through the power zone but to the upper side of the wind window. This way, any lousy piloting will only make the kite go to the edge of the wind window where it has less power. 
but this movement is a little bit different than the other ones. At two o'clock, we should pull the bar entirely to make the kite turn quickly. Once it has rotated and it's pointing to the upper opposite side, we should depower the bar entirely by pushing the bar up. Once the kite is passing in front of the power zone, we should pull the bar according to the power we need to start going. Board. Before trying to water start, we should make sure that we do not rotate. For this, we do a steady pull by making sure the board is always parallel to the kite every time we move it from side to side. We should stay in a squat position and rotate with the kite to each of the sides, always maintaining the squat position. To help us, we should bend the front leg and push on the back leg to make sure the board always goes together with the kite. But your body should be in a squat position, parallel shoulders to the kite, and once the kite passes, the power and you pull the bar, you try to push the board into the water. You move from a squat position to a vertical one perpendicular to the kite lines. The advantage of this water start is that the kite is not passing through the power zone and going to the water. This way, if you fail because there wasn't enough power, the kite's on the edge of the wind window. So this can be made in a gradual way that you can try and if you fail, you will still be on the edge of the wind window. And you can restart the procedure with a bit more power. Of course, if you stand up vertically, you can fly over the board as well. Or if you don't need power, you can also fly. The advantage of this technique is that the power is better distributed through the wind window. And when you fail, you don't send the kite into the ground with full power. This way, the kite is not destroyed. It saves the kite and you a lot. You can also practice these techniques separately. You can try the power movement without the board and even without trying to stand up. By doing the steady pull, you can feel the same as in the water start and you almost start if you power the kite a bit. Very simply, here it is. What I want you to do is down, up. So from there, turn, up, pull. Again, from there, turn fully, bar up, pull. Do not stand up. Just press your leg. Legs are bent. Turn. Bar up. I recommend you get an instructor to help you out when you are learning to water start as there are very different mistakes and trained eyes looking at you and helping you out increase the learning progress. These videos are just to help you to remember and visualize what you're supposed to do. Water start involves coordination of kite, board, body, so it's always better to have someone helping you achieve your goal. These are my water start techniques. I most of the time use the down up one and when the wind is very strong, I use the power stroke one. It also comes down to the student. So often there's a combination of techniques to help the student to learn quicker. I rarely use the up down because I found it to be the least effective one. I learned using it and teached it for many years. But once I have discovered these other two techniques, the progression of the students and durability of the kites increased exponentially. If you haven't subscribed to the videos, click here to subscribe. And if you want to check more videos, just click right here. See you on the next videos.